Hi, Michael from Invarian here, and welcome to the video covering what's new in Rapid Plan Online as of September 2024. We've added a few new tools, made some improvements to the user interface, and added new features. So let's take a look. First, let's review the biggest changes in this update the addition of a comments section, and the redesigned signs palette. There is now another palette on the right side of your window for comments between the history and layers palettes. You can use this palette to leave general comments about the plan, or you can right click on your map and leave a comment in a specific location on the plan. All comment threads are called conversations. To add a new general comment, Click the new comment icon in the upper right corner of the comments palette here. And once you've written it, click the start new conversation button to save your comment. You or any other collaborating users viewing the plan can then reply to this comment in the comments palette by clicking the reply button to save the reply. You will also see an actions button next to each conversation, which looks like three dots arranged vertically. This can be clicked to mark a conversation as resolved. You can also add a comment to a specific location on your plan. To do this, right click on your plan and select add comment. Then click the start new conversation button to save it. You or any other collaborating user can then reply to that comment through the comments palette or by clicking on the blue comment icon to show the comment or conversation in that location on your plan. While viewing an existing comment located on the plan, you have the same options available of replying or marking the conversation as resolved. If you accidentally mark a comment or conversation as resolved, please note that you will see a collapsed section at the bottom of the comments palette for resolved, where you can click to expand, then click the three dots next to it and choose unresolve. For teams collaborating on plans, next to a resolved comment, you will also see an info button you can click to see who marked the conversation as resolved and when. The signs palette has been redesigned to make finding your signs as easy as possible. Historically, the signs palette occupied space on the left side of your window, including a small side-to-side -side field at the top for navigating the categories within your selected library and the corresponding signs displayed in a scrollable list below. Now, the signs palette makes better use of horizontal space, expanding outward into the canvas area so you can see all sign categories at once and, if you choose, all signs within that category. To toggle between libraries and categories, click on the label for the selected library here. You'll then see the signs window expand, allowing you to select a library and a category within it. Once you select the category, this window will disappear and those signs will appear in your signs palette. If you would prefer an expanded view of the signs themselves, reopen the sign window and click this icon in the upper right corner to make it full screen. With the signs window full screen, you'll see your libraries and categories on the left with a list of signs in the selected category displayed in the center and a search bar above them. Note that the search bar will search across all sign libraries and categories, so you do not need to navigate to the correct category before searching for a specific sign. The open button in the upper right corner of the signs window will close the full screen mode returning you to the traditional signs palette with this library and category selected. If you click on a sign in this window, you will see it expand on the right, much like a selected plan would in your Invariant Cloud homepage. To use that selected sign, just click Use This Sign, and it will be selected and ready to place on your plan as a sign normally would. On the topic of palettes, another recent change is that you can now customize the palettes displayed to you while designing plans. Previously, you could click the header of a palette to minimize it or use the arrows at the top of the left and right hand palettes to hide all palettes on that side of the window. But you can now manually choose to hide certain palettes altogether. For example, if you prefer to use the shortcut Ctrl-Z to undo and don't use the history palette, you can hide it by clicking this icon in the upper right corner, then clicking the eye icon next to the history palette, or any other palette you'd like to hide. 
Another setting in this area is single panel view, which you can select for either the left or right hand side of palettes or both. The single panel view will allow you to only open one palette on that side of the window at a time to maximize its space and allow for better visibility. The context menu that appears next to a selected object now features a minimized state as well, consolidating your options into a horizontal row of icons rather than the traditional vertical list. To maximize the context menu and return it to this traditional view, click this icon in the minimized context menu. To minimize it again, select minimize at the top of the context menu. Another change to available actions when selecting an object revolves around the selection box surrounding an object you select. In addition to the squares used to resize and the turning arrows used to rotate, you now have white arrows around the object pointing outward from it. These arrows can be used to attach another object pointing toward your selected object, including an arrow to the object, an arrow away from the object, a callout box, a distance marker pointing to the object, and an arrow text box pointing to the object. Note that for signs, you still have the integrated sign stand icon appearing below the selected sign that can be used to indicate both where the sign will be placed and the direction it will face. Lastly, there have been some new tools added since the last update video. In your road tools, you'll now see a road region tool available. This is a freeform tool that works like the work area tool, allowing you to make any shape you need, and it's most often used for parking areas. In your marker tools, you'll now find a new annotation tool, the number stamp. This tool works just like placing a sign on your plan in the sense that you can continue left clicking to stamp numbers on your plan, then right click to stop. The number stamp tool can be used however you see fit though it's especially helpful for consolidating plan notes into a numbered list, reducing the number of text boxes placed around your plan. The other annotation tool included since the last update video is the QR code tool, allowing you to add a QR code pointing to any URL in case you'd like to link any plan reviewers to your website or another web page for additional information. You will also find a new distance marker in this tool category, the Combined Offset Distance Marker. This tool is used to display a series of measured distances off to the side of the area being measured so as to avoid crowding or covering up details in the area being measured. It works largely like the Combined Distance Marker does, except that the measured distances are displayed above the points between which you're measuring. When using this distance marker, you still have the option to measure a distance manually or use the dimension input field to enter a specific distance you wish to measure. Note that you can adjust the offset position by left clicking on this distance marker, then using the green control point to reposition it. This concludes the video covering what's new in Rapid Plan Online as of September 2024. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest here at Invariant.